AI is getting out of hand. Every day, millions of students use it to generate satisfactory but soulless work. AI can write essays, make book reports, it can do math, and even build Excel spreadsheets. All of the output created in seconds, but also forgotten in minutes. Mundane and thoughtless assignments given by schools, teachers, and even parent guides are killing students' creativity because all they want to do is finish it up and it all ends up as AI slop. Kate, a high school English and journalism teacher, says my kids don't think anymore. Even my smartest kids insist that ChatGPT is good when used correctly. I ask them, how does one use it correctly then? They can't answer the question. They try to show me information ChatGPT gave them. I ask them, how do you know this is true? They move their phone closer to me for emphasis, exclaiming, look, it says it right here. They cannot understand what I'm asking them. Not just students. Professionals are using AI to finish up their work, meet unrealistic deadlines, and resulting in chaos because of the AI mistakes. But it turns out Deloitte used AI to produce the report, causing the mistakes. Well, I think it's a breach of integrity, a breach of trust. Among the errors, Chris found the report wrongly referred to a key federal court case and misquoted the judge. So in this video, let's talk about AI what it is, why is it so harmful to our kids, and why I'm not letting my kids come anywhere close to AI while they are in their formative and learning years. And in the end, you might be asking, so should we never use AI? My answer is <laughs> So first, let's get into what is the problem with AI. Number one is that it creates an illusion of learning. The way our brain learns is that it takes in information, processes it. If we have to memorize something, we do that, and then the brain will compartmentalize that information. With repeated exposure, especially with spaced repetition and practice, the concepts become clear in our heads, stick for a long time, and ideally we move on with the knowledge either to use it in a practical scenario or build on top of it. But the problem with AI is that when you type something into ChatGPT, all you're doing is giving away your processing power. And just like the muscles in our body, the brain also needs work and exercise to stay sharp. We believe you cheated, wrote the essay using ChatGPT. I mean, you wrote a flawless 50 page essay, but as everyone knows, you can't speak English. Please, please don't cry. It's a pity less racism at such a prestigious university. Excuse me? Many foreigners actually excel at writing English. Wow, I, I'm really, I'm sorry. Don't I... be sorry. This is America, a country built on racism. Equality here is a mere fuckati. Once you're hit by a curiosity, if you remove the thinking process before getting the results, it is going to make our brain weaker. There are studies that even prove that there are residual effects of brain decline after using AI. I recently wrote a story entitled, ChatGPT may be eroding critical thinking skills, according to a new MIT study. The research began with three essay writing sessions where students were able to pick writing prompts they were interested in. The researchers found that of the three groups, the ChatGPT users had the lowest brain engagement and consistently underperformed at neural, linguistic, and behavioral levels. Over the course of several months, the ChatGPT users got lazier with each subsequent essay, often resorting to copy and paste. So in this case, you can already tell that when kids are learning and they are in their formative years, if we just give them the magic wand to solve all their problems, they're not going to be able to develop critical thinking skills. And it's just like when we were kids, our parents wouldn't give us calculators because they wanted us to do all the math problems. I don't think I was given a calculator till like 11th grade. And then also it was like the scientific calculator that now you absolutely need some square root or a cube root of a ridiculous number that you need to plug into your calculus equation. And that's totally fine because now if you sit down and do that calculation, you're going to waste hours and hours. So in order for you to go ahead with your work, the calculator is a necessary tool. So that's how AI is making us feel very smart because we're able to type something into chat GPT. It spits out a response and we think that we know what that topic is all about but it's only an illusion of knowledge because all we're doing is reading an output given by the chatbot and not really using our brain to process it correctly the other thing that i've noticed even in my personal use is that when chat gpt spits out so much information in such little time i don't value it anymore i think that i got it down because it gave me so many ideas but 
because it did not take any effort or any work for me, my brain was not involved. I don't retain that information for a long period of time. So it can make us feel like we are smart, but in my opinion, an illusion of knowledge is one of the most dangerous things we can do to ourselves. And not only does it create an illusion, AI is riddled with errors, which brings me to the next problem, the AI mistakes and hallucinations. In order to understand how AI hallucinates, we should understand how AI works. And what it does is it does not understand text, information, or math. All it does is it is trained on a giant amount of data. So for example, when you're typing on your phone, how are AI already knows that the next word is you. That's not because it understands that we like to use this how are you as a sentence. That's only because the terabytes of data that it has been trained on, how are was followed by you at a high frequency. So when it looks at the frequency, it guesses that you will be the next word. Now that's the keyword, it guesses. So as you can tell, when there is so much data and so many guesses happening, if one guess is incorrect, the domino effect starts and all the guesses after that become incorrect. This is called AI hallucination. Then it is also seen to make up information that does not exist. Here's an example where the big consultancy firm Deloitte used AI to create a report, but it was full of hallucinations. It had cited books by authors that they had never written. One of the academics cited was law professor Lisa Burton Crawford. So this is my book, The Rule of Law and the Australian Constitution. And the report attributes uh, a book to me called The Rule of Law and Administrative Justice in the Welfare State, a study of Centrelink. Does that book exist? No. So it's a fake book? Yes, I've, I've never written a book uh, with that title. The problem with AI is that it does not fact check. And even if it does, again, it does not understand the context, it just guesses. So we still have a long way before AI can become very reliable. Currently, it is said that it can make up to 25 to 30% mistakes, which is pretty bad for a tool that we're using on a daily basis. And so many parents think that, oh, this is so cool, let's just give our kids this tool and they won't have to struggle with their work. But if one thing that I've learn from reading tons of parenting books is if we take away their struggle we take away their self-esteem their struggle is their struggle if they don't feel uncomfortable trying to get answers they are always going to be laid back and complacent and again their brain is developing the way information accrual and practice and mastery works in the brain is that we have billions of neurons inside our brains and there are neural connections every time we practice something especially recall or something hard, there is a coating that is formed on between these neural pathways. It's called myelin. And the more you practice, the thicker that myelin coating gets. If you keep breaking your focus, if you keep taking the easy route, you're not going to build that myelin connection between the two neurons and those synapses or connections will break easily over time. The struggle is good for our children. So is the solution just to stop using AI? I don't think so. Like I said, this is a revolutionary technology and it is here to stay. So how can we make the best out of it? The number one thing that we can do is follow our kids' interests. This is so cliche, but even more important in the AI world. If a child is made to do something that they are not truly invested or interested in, they will want to cheat. This is already happening in schools and universities. Here's an example of a PhD student who wrote their dissertation using AI and the teachers caught it right away. Now in this case, this almost looks believable that the teachers are right and the student is wrong, but there have been many cases where the students did not use AI, the teachers were using AI detection tools, the tools themselves are hallucinating or are incorrect and now the students are facing the the brunt of these teachers. So they just made it pretty much impossible to use ChatGPT or any kind of AI in college. Because now, whenever I pull up my paper, there's a new button. You go down here, you press it, and then watch writing report. And what this basically does is you press play, and it'll show exactly what you started with and then what you wrote to like change the text and then it'll say who did what 
how natural it sounds. This one's a bit iffy, but it has pauses, errors, and proof of effort. And then it shows you how long it took to wrote the edits and pastes. You can't even just paste in AI and then edit it anymore. So even in this case, the solution is that we follow our kids' curiosities and interests and really respect their learning path. I've been reading this book and even though the title is super negative, I highly recommend you go through this book and understand how the author argues that if you treat kids with respect, this is all about writing and raising brave and strong writers. If you're only giving them writing assignments to judge them and critique them, as soon as they turn their assignments in, just hacking it with red pen, especially very popular method in schools, what we are going to do is just kill their writing curiosity. In this book, the author argues that punctuation, spellings, even grammar does not matter. First, listen to the child's voice. What every child wants to express themselves. What is it that is in their heart, in their brain, in their entire body? They want to write it down, but almost every time that a child writes, the first thing is like, you forgot a comma, the semicolon is used mistakenly over here. Here's a grade C. Whenever teachers are grading their assignments, they put the grade right on the top right corner because it's easy for the teachers to just go through it and put it in their documents. But when those graded papers are sitting in class, kids can see each other's grades and get embarrassed by it. So we have created this system, unfortunately, that only creates a paper trail, but we forget about our kids' heart and emotions. This book even has a chapter about what to do with AI and how AI is affecting writing. And are we gonna lose all of original human voices? What's a professor to do to like, I don't know, prevent cheating? How do you know your paper wasn't written by ChatGPT? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the, the best way, the most effective way to fully prevent cheating mm -hmm. is to assume students are using AI and test for that knowledge in new and more challenging ways. So maybe that means we flip what used to happen at home, maybe that happens in school. But it also means if it's no longer sufficient for a student to write a basic paper or essay, because AI can do that, we need to raise the bar on what humans bring to the table. We did this with math, the calculator meant math got harder. So the same type of updating with AI, so maybe this looks like a teacher assigning, go write this essay at home with ChatGPT. Come back into school and with no AI systems, improve it, critique it, argue against it. So we need to level the playing field the same way we've done with other technological innovations. And I know sometimes there's like these AI detectors that people try to use. Mm -hmm. We can't, those don't work. They're not very effective. They can actually penalize people who have English as a second language. Yeah. And even OpenAI, the maker of ChatGPT, pulled their detection tool off the market. So instead of playing whack-a-mole and trying to yeah. spy on who's yeah. using AI, mm -hmm. We really need to adopt it and, and wow. prepare for the future. Even while writing this video, I was very tempted to use AI. I did create a document outline with AI, but it was all so impersonal. I threw it away, went down my usual research of finding real stories, creating real human voice, and I feel like I could make more impact this way. Just with everything that I write and all the videos that I make, I try to use minimal AI as possible. But even then, sometimes it's a good assistant. So what I do and the rule that I've created for myself, for kids, zero AI. I don't think I'm gonna let my kids touch AI till they're at least 13 years old. But when they're 13 or older or even adults like us, I always sit down and write everything that is in my heart and my brain first, then I will go maybe get a human feedback. Only after that, if I need some polish or something that is a very, very professionally written document, I will use AI incredibly carefully to create a polish around the structure and see if I can improve it again as an assistant and not as a replacement of the human. So I call this system EI, empathic intelligence, because here we're using critical thinking skills, understanding what our kids or other people are going through and giving them work assignments or doing the teamwork based on our human connection, using AI only as a little assistant that it's meant to be. 
not replacing us. I'm very curious, what are your thoughts about AI? Are you letting your kids use it for solving problems or you're also staying away from it? I just feel like technology can overburden us, make us lose focus. I had decided to keep my kids away from screens just because the overstimulation would make everything else boring. So right now, because they are so screen deprived, in other words, they are living a normal childhood, they get excited by books, chess, math, and little simple joys of life. <laughs> the same is with AI that this has such potential to be misused that it doesn't make sense for us to use it in our household. But if you guys are using it cleverly and with restraint, please leave any ideas in the comment section below and I would love to read those. If you want to know why and how I started my homeschooling journey, I'll leave the link to that video in the description box and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!